A number of years ago, I remember hearing a minister by the name of John Allen Chalk talking about one Sunday morning when he'd come in for the worship, and he sat down toward the front trying to clear his mind and get ready for the worship service that day. And while he was there focusing in on his lesson, thinking about it, he heard somebody say, you know, it's great to be a Christian. He said he looked up where he thought he heard the voice coming from, and he saw a young man sitting over there by himself. But he said it looked as if he were not talking to anyone in particular, looking off in another direction. So he said, I turned back immediately to my lesson, and so I tried to focus on that. But he said, I couldn't help thinking over and over in my mind what he had said. So he said, finally, I turned and looked toward the, that young man, and I spoke out loud and said to him, you're right. It's great to be a Christian. And it is. One of the greatest things, it is the greatest thing in life is to be a Christian, to be a child of God. I know as a child growing up, so many times you'll have people asking you questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And most of the time a child's going to answer something like being a, a fireman, a policeman, a doctor, or, or something of that nature, maybe a teacher that they'd like to be. I had different ideas for my children. But I never focused in my mind what I wanted them to do in life. But it was always in my mind and my heart that I wanted them, above all things, to be a Christian. That's the greatest thing in life that anyone can choose to do, is to become a child of God. And so this night, I, I just want to mention very briefly three reasons why I think that it's great to be a Christian. Number one, it's great to be a Christian because of the fact that we have a great high priest that we serve. If you just stop and think back in the Old Testament, the high priests that the people of God had were people who were very limited. You know, it didn't matter how great a high priest might be, how, how well he might have served the people, how he, well he might have interceded on behalf of the people of God in making sacrifices and so forth. He was always limited by his own life because it didn't matter how good he was or how hard he worked to serve the people of God. The time would come when he's going to die, and he'd no longer be able to serve. But we have a God who is not hindered by that. We have a high priest who is an eternal being. The Bible teaches us in Revelation chapter 1, and verse 18, Jesus said, I am he that was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. So we always have that high priest to make intercession for us. He'll always be there for us. But not only that, he's a high priest who understands our problems that we have. And because of that, he can sympathize, he can empathize with us in this life. And he cares for us and wants to do everything he can to help us to be what God wants us to be. So it's great to be a Christian because of the great high priest we have, but it's also great to be a Christian because Christians are those who have every spiritual blessing that God has to give. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the God of our, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when a person makes a decision to become a Christian, to become God's child, that's an individual who then has all of the spiritual blessings that God has to offer in life. Being a, a child of God means that we are new creatures. Uh, we have salvation from our past sins. We live in the hope of eternal life. All of these things that we have because we're Christians. And then thirdly, it's great to be a Christian because Christians are those we know who are going to be victorious. In the Old Testament, there's an interesting statement that God had made about His people then, and I think it's still true for God's people today. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 13, the promise is made, and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. That simply means God's going to make you a winner and not the loser. And in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul made the statement in, in Romans chapter 8 when he said in verse 37, We are more than conquerors through Him who died for us. In Christ, we become more than conquerors. I, I, I've used this illustration so many times, but I think it's so pertinent. A, a football game that was played between Georgia Tech University and Cumberland College. And it was a time during the war when, when many of those young men who had played football had gone into the service. And so Cumberland didn't have many players to begin with, and, and now they've lost the ones they had. And, and some of the people they had on the team were people who had played, some of them had played a little bit of high school football, but not much, and that was about it. 
But they decided they would go ahead and, and play the game, and they traveled by train down to Atlanta to play Georgia Tech. Now, I have been to some football games. I saw Alabama win one football game, 77 to nothing. And I thought, boy, what a rout. But on that day, Georgia Tech defeated Cumberland 220 to nothing. They were averaging 55 points per quarter. And the thing about it is, is so many times I've thought about that, when the Cumberland team left the field that day, they didn't go off that field thinking, boy, how lucky Georgia Tech was. They went off thinking Georgia Tech was more than conquerors. And that's what God has, has, has promised to us as His children, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us and died for us. We know that the victory is ours. We don't have to worry about how things are going to end. We know how it's going to end. That God and His children are victorious. We'll be more than conquerors. So it's great to be a Christian for those three reasons, among so many others we could talk about. But just mention those tonight. Say here, if, if you're not a Christian, look at what you're missing in not being a child of God. And so tonight we would encourage you to, to make your life right with God. If you believe in Jesus as God's Son, that you would then confess Him before men, repenting of your sins, and being buried with Christ in baptism for the forgiveness of sins, at which time... He adds you to His family, to His church. You become His child. And maybe there are some here tonight as Christians that know that though you've become His child, you haven't really been living faithful to Him the way you should. And, and tonight we would encourage you to, to correct that by repenting of those sins and praying to God for the forgiveness you need. And so tonight, if you're not God's child, if your child is not living faithfully, we'd encourage you, correct that. Make things right with Him. Because the greatest thing in life that you could ever be is to be a Christian. If you need to respond to Jesus tonight, please do that while we stand and while we sing.